Hey everyone, welcome back. Thank you so much for joining me today. Um, I received an interesting question which dealt with how to release tension while playing at the harp. And this is something that uh, I teach my students. It is very important and I'm happy to address it. So let's go ahead and just jump right in. Uh, on my website, I do have printable PDF and this will also include some exercises. So this is basically accompanying the blog that's on my website, which can be found at the link above. So when we're playing the harp, there is obviously uh, a little bit of tension involved. There's the necessary tension, which is created when we need to pluck the string. So we are creating that tension, that energy to go ahead and use our fingers to pluck the string. That's the necessary kind of tension. The unnecessary kind of tension crops up when we are not paying attention. So we want to really focus in on that. that and that is the tension that is in our hands as we play a passage. As we're playing something, we are holding on to that tension and not releasing it. We need to focus on releasing that tension. And the, it's also the tension that uh, you hold on to even after you raise. So when you pluck the strings, you don't want to be holding on to that, that tension. You want to pluck and go ahead and release. Um, it's the tension that you feel in your forearms even after you pluck a string, even if there's no raising involved. If you pluck a string and you feel that tension in your arm, that is the unnecessary tension that we're talking about. This unnecessary tension can cause tendonitis, it can cause repetitive stress injury, and it can cause a harpist to not come back to the instrument and not play, not glean any, in, any enjoyment out of it, and that is not the goal. So these issues can be fixed. However, keep in mind that they need, they're gonna be fixed through diligent, slow, thorough, and mindful practice. As you're playing the harp, if this, this application of releasing tension happens in the beginning of your learning the harp, then you're, you're better off than most. Um, if it's cropping up years after playing, please keep in mind that you need to be patient with yourself. You need to go very slowly and we can, we can fix this issue. So stress can be a result of two things. There's the mental stress or the negative thought process. Um, just like eating right and exercising and getting good sleep is important for uh, the healthy physical body, um, so is positive self-speak healthy for our mental state and our mental frame of mind. Um, I like to call this the inner voice. I will tell my students, be patient with yourself, be kind to yourself. And it's not just mumbo jumbo. Being kind to yourself means, you know, thinking positively, giving yourself a positive light. Even if it's something that you have to fake initially, if you just get up and kind of, you know, put on a smile, stand in a positive, you know, c confirming pose and say, you know, this is gonna be a great day, we are going to get something done today, being positive can make a huge difference. So recognize that inner voice and make a mental effort to change it. The second result of stress is physical tension. So these are caused by technical issues. Technical issues can keep a player from playing successfully. Um, physical tension is more common than the mental tension, than the inner voice. Uh, physical tension is a result of poor instruction. And it can be a, a result of sloppy practice. So we just need to learn how to practice. And uh, it can also be a result of learning a piece that is way outside your, your technical ability, um, way outside your comfort zone. Of course, it is important as you're learning harp to play something that's a little bit more challenging as you progress, as you become a better harpist, that's how we do it. Um, but if you jump the gun, if you bite off more than you chew and then you can chew, then you're gonna be, you're gonna be stuck in a position where you're forcing yourself to learn something you're not physically technically capable of doing yet and you're going to feel that tension and you're not going to be able to release, relax, and learn properly. Um, it is much harder to fix than a student who, is, who has been practicing bad habits. However, it is possible. So let's go forward with a positive inner voice and uh, make this happen. Good heart playing begins with proper posture 
and flexible movement with great focus on relaxation. These are absolutely important. As you sit, always focus on keeping your body, your arms, your wrists, your hands and fingers flexible and loose. Often the focus on this task falls by the wayside when we are focused on learning the notes, the fingering, the pedals, the proper technique. So it's, it's also important to realize, put yourself in a good mental state of mind and always breathe. Breathe through the phrase, breathe through the practice, breathe through the exercises, that is just as important. So let us begin by releasing tension by applying these specific tasks. So first sit comfortably behind the harp in a relaxed state. Keep your shoulders lowered, never raised. Release your tension in your forearms. If this feeling isn't realized immediately, drop your arms by your side and always drop them by the side so that they're not necessarily uh, laying on your lap, but at your side so that they're hanging completely free. Um, it almost feels like a, like a dead, heavy arm. Uh, get used to that feeling as a normal state of relaxation and strive for that every time your hands are then on the harp so that the only tension that we're using before we even pluck comes from our upper arms, our shoulders, our deltoid muscle, so that we are using that muscle to hold everything up. We're not using our wrists, we're not tightening our wrists, we're not tightening our hands, we're not tight tightening our fingers but all that focus comes from the upper arm. Uh, the second thing you wanna do is strive for strong curved knuckles. Uh, this kind of goes back to one of my previous harp instruction uh, videos on how to play the harp with proper hand technique. If you have proper curved knuckles, it is going to facilitate your playing and facilitate ease and releasing that tension. When you have flat knuckles, in other words, playing with your knuckles flat on the strings instead of rounded and curved, um, that's going to, the, your fingers will be weak and it's going to lead to stiff, tense wrists. So keeping your curved uh, joints will help your fingers um, attain complete independence as well. Another thing, breathe completely and through every pluck of the string so that you're breathing through that pluck. Um, another thing is slow practice. I cannot emphasize this enough. The slower you practice, the more time you have to focus on absolutely everything. This is essential in the beginning and essential for establishing good and proper technique. Obviously, you want to increase your, your tempo of practice um, throughout, throughout your, your day or your session but um, initial slow practice will be more beneficial than, than anything. So instead of thinking about what you're playing, you need to think about how you feel while you're playing it. With that said, uh, you know, I have all of this printed out on the PDF that you can get through the website. Uh, so you can leave it on your stand and have it right there to look at immediately. So go through the checklist of releasing tension, relax shoulders, relaxed forearms, relaxed wrists, relaxed hands, and relaxed fingers. Start your practice session with something that requires absolutely no demand on your technical ability or mental capacity. Choose something that is so incredibly easy. And that's what I've done for us today. These, of course, again, can be printed out uh, through my website and through the blog. You'll see the link for the PDF. There are two exercises that we're gonna go through today. Um, and they're incredibly easy for this very purpose, to focus on proper technique and releasing this tension while you're playing. The first exercise that I have is a simple pluck of a C string with your second finger in both right hand and left hand. And the idea of this exercise is to go through the checklist, go slow enough that you can think about everything in that checklist, and we're going to um, raise in the process as well. So if you place your second finger on middle C, remember nice curved knuckles. So go through the checklist, arms off the soundboard, wrists slightly bent inwards, round knuckles, high thumbs, space between the thumb and the second finger. Uh, close all your fingers into the palm as you pluck them and raise after each completed placement. So for this exercise, we're gonna pluck that C and there's gonna be a, 
an ever so slightly little bit of tension while we pluck that C. But the second you pluck that C, release that tension in your hand, your wrist, and your forearm. And use the raising as the uh, facilitator, so to speak, for all of those actions to happen. Release that tension as you're raising up and away from the harp. And I want you to focus on something. Focus on my hand. As I pluck, I'm not holding my fingers into the palm. I'm not holding onto that tension. I'm immediately releasing so that my fingers come out just ever so slightly after I pluck. More importantly, breathe through, go slow enough, and get used to that feeling. Uh, number two on that exercise is C and E. So uh, second finger on C, thumb on E, same thing here, and the finger is nice and round. Uh, curved knuckles. Feel that tension squeezing between C and E. They're going to squeeze together towards each other. But the second that you play, release that tension. Uh, we don't want to get into the habit of after every time we play, we're kind of wiggling our hands or wiggling our arms. But if it's necessary initially to kind of make sure that you are not feeling any tension, go nice and slow breathe through that exercise. That's the first exercise that I would have you do. Um, you can print that PDF up on my website. The second exercise I absolutely love. This is one uh, when I came to high school at Interlochen Arts Academy after I'd been playing for more than 10 years, more than a decade. Um, my teacher said, oh my goodness, there's tension in your hands, we need to get rid of that. And she had me doing nothing but exercises for what felt like an entire year, but I'm sure it was just either several weeks or close to a couple months. Just doing exercises, that's it, no pieces. Focusing very slowly on proper technique and releasing that tension. So the second exercise that I have is the seventh chord exercise. Absolutely love this exercise. So this exercise, we're gonna play a seventh chord. Uh, fourth finger on G, third finger on B, second finger on D, thumb on F. And the idea here is to hold your thumb, your second, and your third, and then play just your fourth finger four times, five times, six times, enough to get used to this feeling of releasing the tension. So you'll pluck that finger and immediately release, relax. Release the tension, relax your, your fingers, your wrist, your arm. Do that several times. And you'll notice how slowly we are going. Yes, this is painfully slow for some people. You wanna just jump right in, learn the music, go fast, get it done. You're going to run into a world of problems because of that. So make sure that you are allowing yourself the proper education um, for really good technique, playing comfortably, playing well, and um, enjoying yourself. This is what we're doing. We're doing this to enjoy music, to enjoy playing music. Then move on to your third finger. When you replace your third, be sure to bring out your fourth and your fifth as a shadow of that third finger. So what you're doing is when you're bringing out your third, you're not keeping your fourth and fifth tucked inside because that right there is an indication of tension. So relax, bring that third and fourth out. Before I pluck, you'll notice that my third and my fourth and fifth kind of relax, and then they all come in together. Same thing with your second finger. So we're gonna keep our thumb is still on. For the second finger, make sure the two, uh, three, four, and five are nice and relaxed, just kind of hanging right there. The second you play your second, bring everything in, and then release. So play, release, play, release. When you get to your thumb, place uh, two, three, and four back on the strings. Play your thumb and close it all the way over to your second finger. Play, release. Play, release. If you do not feel immediately that sensation of releasing that tension, then go a little bit slower. Painfully slow is what I tell my students. Just practice painfully slow. If you think you're going slow, you are not going slow enough. Sit there, breathe through it. And that's the idea of the exercises for the right hand. Um, apply the same thing to the left hand. You're playing.
plucking, releasing immediately. So that the only tension that there should be right now in keeping your fingers on the string is coming from your upper arm. Obviously, you know, you're using your forearm to hold your arm up a little bit. You're using most of your, your um, upper arm, your deltoid, to keep that, that arm level, that arm up. And you're just resting your fingers on the strings. There's no tension going on whatsoever. So the idea here is that you want to go slowly. Um, so go, go through the checkpoints, go through the list of proper technique of being comfortable sitting behind your instrument before you even start. Breathe through that phrase. You want to be completely comfortable, completely relaxed. Will this take time? Absolutely. If you have the time to work on it, force yourself to do just these exercises for the next few weeks. Focusing on, on feeling that sensation, recognizing what it feels like to be tense, recognizing what it feels like to relax and release that tension. Uh, I hope this has helped. Please print these up. These are at, at your disposal. They're free. I'm here to help your heart playing. Um, if you have any questions, any concerns, you want to see something else, you want, you want me to work on something else specifically for you, um, don't forget that I also offer online lessons. If there's something that you want to work on that you want to pay for just one lesson, we can set it up. And I can work online with you. I've got Skype, I've got FaceTime and we can figure out how to work through these challenges for you and make and make a, a better practice session for you and, and have you enjoy music. Um, so you can sign up for one lesson, you can sign up for a few, uh, however the case may be. Um, I hope this has helped and we'll see you next time. All right, bye-bye.